Welcome to Beyond the Badge. Beyond the Badge is an inside look at your Oshkosh Police Department, brought to you through the resources of Oshkosh Community Media Services. Welcome to this edition of Beyond the Badge. I'm Joe Nichols. On today's show, we'll be talking with Mary Ann Radley from Reach Counseling and Brian Wright from the Christine Ann Center, who are going to give us information on how we can recognize the, the signs of domestic abuse, how we can report the violence, and how we can get help to the victims that need it. We will also be talking about the Take Back Night event, which is coming up very quickly. We thank all of you watching us on City Cable 10 and those of you listening to us on 101.9 WOCT. Mary Ann and Brian, thanks for coming to the show. Yes, thank Absolutely. you for having us. Awesome. Thank you very much for coming. And I know, Mary Ann, you've been on the show before, but uh, if you'd like to, just remind our viewers a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, well, like you said, my name is Mary Ann Radley. I am the Advocacy Program Director and the Volunteer Coordinator at Reach Counseling Services, which is a sexual assault center that serves Winnebago County and the surrounding area. Fantastic. Fantastic. And Brian. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, my name is yeah. Brian Wright. And, uh, I work uh, as a prevention and youth advocate for Chris and Domestic Abuse Services. So currently been there for the last two years. Okay. Um, I do, as a prevention educator, I get to go into all the schools, which is Winnebago, Green Lake County, um, and be able to educate students from first grade all the way up to 12th grade as to what it is to have a healthy relationship, what it means to be, um, if we're experiencing some of those things that are occurring, um, and just getting to show them better ways to, to deal with one another so that we're not having these you know, unhealthy situations occurring. So. Fantastic. Well, both of you, thank you for being on today's show and talking with us. And Marianne, we're going to start with you. Okay. Uh, we talked about Take Back the Night. Okay. First of all, what is it? Well, Take Back the Night is hopefully an event that's becoming very familiar with the Oshkosh community. Uh, we host it every year on the campus. And it's a local event, but it's also an international and national movement and event. So the purpose of Take Back the Night is to raise awareness and draw attention to the issue of violence against women, specifically domestic violence and sexual assault. So the Christine Ann Domestic Abuse Services and REACH work very closely together with this event, as does UW Oshkosh, and putting it on every year. It began in the 1970s as a response to the murder of a woman, a young woman in Pennsylvania who had been walking home from school one night and was stabbed to death. People came out, rallied around this event, and Take Back the Night since then has been kind of a cry to end this type of senseless violence against women that we know happens at ep epidemic rates. No, absolutely, and it, it is a, it's a fantastic night. A lot of information gets shared, yes. and we kind of celebrate, uh, you know, taking back the night. Absolutely. It, and, is, it is really great to be able to see all those agencies, you know, coming together and being a part of that, too, just to be able to show the community how many different resources there really are. So. Absolutely, Definitely. absolutely. Yes. And uh, this year's event is special. Yes. Uh, it's a big anniversary. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little about, uh, about the event? Absolutely. Well, this year we are really excited to celebrate our 25th anniversary of Take Back the Night in Oshkosh. So we have been having this event in one way, shape, or form at one you know place in Oshkosh since 1990, which is fantastic. A lot of the people that are going to be coming this year weren't even alive then. So the <laughs> event is you know becoming older than our participants, which is very exciting. Um, so we have a couple changes. Um, we wanted to make this year a little bit more exciting and special than we have in the past. And um, we're going to start it at the Alumni Center this year. So people that are are used to coming to the event know we have started at Reeve historically. This year mm -hmm. we're going to utilize the beautiful new Alumni Center at UW Oshkosh, so Great. folks that are planning on coming should make sure that that's where they come to start out the event. Great. We'll have our usual um, activities fair, the rally, we'll have the drum circle, we'll have activities for people to participate in as well as the resource fair so people can learn about the community resources in the area, Things like REACH and Christine Ann, other nonprofit agencies, as well as campus organizations, will have their um, resource booths out as well. And then for our speakers, we'll have our traditional survivor speaker, 
this year we'll have um, a brave young woman who had experienced sexual assault on campus here at UWO. We know that that's a huge problem na na nationwide and yes. it's kind of getting a lot of attention right now so we thought we'd you know stick with that topic and see if we could address that a little bit further. Um, so our survivor will be speaking about her experiences here at UW Oshkosh as a survivor of sexual violence. Mm -hmm. For our educational component with our speaker, we have Joe Samelin coming. He is part of Breakthrough Inc., which is out of New York City and India. So it's an international organization that works on creating culture change to respond to sexual violence and violence against women and girls. So how can we change the culture that we live in that kind of perpetuates the violence that happens. Absolutely. And so he'll be coming, um, spending some time with us to talk about his organization and how his organization works with campuses. So tying in with our survivor piece and maybe doing some work with UW Oshkosh afterwards. Fantastic. Yeah, Fantastic. it's going to be very exciting. A lot happening yes. that night, yes. absolutely. And uh, I, you probably mentioned a little bit of this, but who works together to make Take Back the Night uh, evolve? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, definitely people from REACH, myself, um, people from Christine Ann Domestic Abuse Services, as well as a couple representatives from the UW Oshkosh campus. We have a rep from the Counseling Center, as well as a lot of students that actually do some behind the scenes work. So we're really grateful to all of the agencies that put in so much time to make this event happen every year. Great. Yeah. Excellent. And Brian, uh, your first time on the show here, uh, but and uh, I know that you're not uh, new to uh, the Take Back the Night event. No, absolutely uh, not. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, though, and Oshkosh has many reports of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, what is domestic violence? That is a, it's a really great question to be able to lead off with just for the simple fact that, you know, when I go into all the schools, as I stated, or I go into the community um, or wherever it is in general, I still hear those typical responses. I ask the community, what, what do you feel domestic violence is? What do you feel abuse is in general when you hear those terms? And immediately it's always, uh, you know, repetition of the same response. It's, it's all about physical. It's all about <clears throat> somebody being hit, kicked or slapped. And in all reality, it's, it doesn't have to be physical. And that's one of the biggest things that we educate um, individuals in the community on is that abuse isn't just physical. And what we um, educate others on is the eight individual aspects that make up abuse way before it becomes physical. And it's all about that power and control wheel. Um, who has the power? Who's up here and who's down here? And whenever you're in a position as to where you feel um, you know, your opinion, your voice, or anything <clears throat> doesn't matter, or that you feel as though you really don't have a say in what's happening, there's that influx between that power and control. And so abuse is really about who's up here and who's down here, and just really being able to have that influx between healthiness and that relationship, so. Very good information. And does domestic violence affect, uh, you know, one gender, race, income level? No, absolutely not. That is, uh, that's one thing that a lot of times we like to be able to stick to is, oh, it's just a women's issue. It's just, you know, leave it to the women. But in all reality, it, it, abuse doesn't care who you are. It's, it doesn't discriminate one bit. It doesn't matter um, as to who you are. It's about who's up here and who's down here, like I stated before. And <clears throat> so in the first three months that I was working at a domestic violence agency, I actually was um, working with more males than I was females. And it really opened my eyes as to being, you know, this really does happen to not only, you know, just women, but males and just anybody in general. So, yeah, it does not discriminate. Very good. And uh, that's good information. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, But why does it occur? Well, I mean, a lot of times when I, when I go into the schools and I talk to individuals, um, I see a lot of altercations based on the fact that people would rather try to be able to prove who's right rather than to doing what is right in the moment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times if we feel as though we have to be right, a lot of people go to any lengths necessary to really ultimately be able to prove and whether that's at the expense of the other person or whether that comes, um, you know, putting that person down, making them feel crazy or making them feel less than, um, you know, ultimately, that's creating that, that, that troubled situation. Anytime you're trying to be able to get that control once again in that relationship, <clears throat> it's creating that unhealthy environment and you're having that abusive relationship where you're not able to communicate in a healthy way. Whereas, you know, versus doing walking away or those other things that we're conditioned to do, um, we're not seeing that occurring, wait, you know, we're not seeing that happening too often and it escalates to those situations where now, now we are winding up hurting the people we love and care about. Yeah, and, and that's it not good. And, and there's a message right there, yeah, because <clears throat> you're supposed to be caring about people. 
the ones you love, and you're actually hurting them. It's very unfortunate that uh, those that we love and care about usually are the ones that get the brunt of our, our transgressions or a lot Sad. of those feelings are the same, yeah. yeah. So. But we do have good news. It's coming we up. Do. Absolutely. <laughs> Marianne, does sexual yeah. violence occur in domestic situations? Yes, absolutely it does. Um, a lot of times there is an overlap between sexual abuse and domestic violence. So they can certainly occur independently of one another. Oftentimes sexual violence, the cases that we are reporting to, 95, I'd say at least 95% of the cases are the abuse is perpetrated by somebody that the victim knows. And oftentimes in that case, it can be an intimate partner, which would okay. make it fall under that domestic violence um, category, if you will. So we definitely do see a lot of these cases overlapping, um, you know, where a spouse has perpetrated against their partner. And that's, you know, where Christine Ann and Reach can really work together in providing those comprehensive services for that victim. Um, it can, sexual violence is just one more type of violence that can fall under domestic. You know, there's the financial abuse, emotional abuse, um, verbal, all those types of things. And sexual violence is just one one more component Just of one domestic. one more part of it. Yes. And uh, I know when I started here in Oshkosh, I, I know that uh, we, we were given uh, domestic abuse training and they showed us this power wheel. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Absolutely. Where, where does sexual violence fall in the domestic violence wheel? Yeah, I, you know, sexual violence doesn't have its own little wedge on that power and control wheel, but it certainly falls under the criteria of power and control when you're talking about a domestic violence situation. Like Brian explained, it's all about the abuser asserting their part, um, their power, their perceived power over their partner. And sexual violence is just one more way that they attempt to abuse their partner, that they use to abuse their partner. It has, you know, different dynamics of humiliation and embarrassment for their partner um, when you're utilizing sexual violence against them. Um, and there's also different criteria for sexual violence when we're talking about teens and teen dating violence. And I know mm -hmm. Brian touches on that when he goes to the schools as well and we're talking about minors. It's a, yeah. you know, it's a whole other component oh, yeah. on the, to absolutely. violence. <clears throat> on, the, on the teen wheel, we point out the sexual, sexual coercion aspect. And a lot of times what I talk to the individuals about is anytime something's forced, coarse, or manipulated or felt as though it has to be done. Um, and a lot of things nowadays are very hyper-sexualized to the point mm -hmm. where, you know, we go out on three dates, all of a sudden, you know, oh, that equals sex. Or, oh, now it's that expectation that you owe me this. We're in this relationship, so now all of a mm -hmm. sudden, <clears throat> you know, what do I get from this? Yeah. And so anytime you're in those relationships, that sexual coercion is a big part of that. You know, anytime it's forced, coarse, or manipulated, that's exerting that power and that's having that over mm -hmm. them. So, great information, mm -hmm. and we're gonna we're gonna continue this discussion with Marianne and Brian right after this short break. Hello, I'm City Manager Mark Roloff. Roundabouts are new to many of us in Oshkosh so we have to take extra precaution when using them. Remember, safety is the key. Slow down. The speed limit in the roundabout is only 15 miles an hour. Avoid distractions. Focus all your attention on navigating the roundabout. Find the proper lane. Check out the signage leading up to the roundabout. Choose your lane assignment early and stay in your lane. Evaluate the situation. Take notice of what kind of vehicles are in front of you. Sometimes larger trucks need to take up both lanes of a roundabout. Think to look for pedestrians and allow them to cross when entering and exiting a roundabout. Yield to traffic on your left. You must yield to all traffic in the roundabout and that traffic will be coming from your left. Again, safety is the key. Remember that word and what those letters represent and your roundabout driving experience will be a smooth one. Thanks for your support. Welcome back to Beyond the Badge. We are here with Mary Ann Radley and Brian Wright, and we're discussing domestic and sexual violence. Uh, we now have a better, a better understanding uh, of how to recognize you know, what is actually occurring to someone and maybe in our family or to one of our friends or to one of our neighbors. Um, you know, but uh, how do we do that? How do we recognize what's actually occurring? Yeah, noticing some of those signs, um, 
it can be very tough, especially when it's coming to the people that we love and care about. When these things are happening um, to individuals that mean the most to us, it can be extremely hard. And a lot of times we, we don't want to see it as being abusive or a lot of times we overlook things. But when, when you start noticing individuals getting into those relationships, more often than not, the first things you're going to start noticing is you know, when you meet somebody you love and care about, all of a sudden your whole world slowly starts to be able to revolve around this one person. So when you start noticing your family members, friends, or individual loved ones that are getting into these situations, you may more often than not see these people starting to be able to pull away um, from their friends, family, all those people that originally used to support them, um, all their extracurricular activities, all their sports, a lot of those things start getting pushed to the side because this relationship, you know, like I said before, this relationship is everything to them. And when that starts happening, you start noticing that unhealthy trend because mm -hmm. when your world should not revolve around one person to the point where you're leaving behind those other people that mean and care about the most to you. Um, so noticing individuals just kind of pulling away from those things that they once used to be involved in. Um, noticing individuals where all of a sudden uh, their behaviors or their demeanor, their personality. Um, a lot of times when you get into those abusive relationships, the, the abuser oftentimes makes that person feel as though they're not even good enough to be right here or to be my significant other. Um, a lot of those insecurities uh, really are brought out and put onto this other individual. So noticing somebody all of a sudden changing you know, their dress wear, their clothing, um, just anything that they once used to be able to dress up beautifully, but now all of a sudden to that person you're dating, it might be perceived as, oh, you're flirting with somebody else, or oh, why are you putting yourself out there for somebody else? You know, you shouldn't be doing that. You sh it's all about me. <clears throat> so noticing that person all of a sudden covering up, not putting themselves out there in a position where all of a sudden they may be getting yelled at. Um, another thing to that is somebody that's constantly apologizing for the actions of their partners, somebody that's um, always, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, or, oh, they didn't mean that, oh, it was no big deal. A lot of times they're being blamed for a whole lot of things within which really aren't their fault. Um, and so noticing some of that, that uh, demeanor shifting towards that, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, or I'll fix it, I'll take care of it. Um, you know, because they're trying to always be able to correct the mistakes or try to be able to fix that position they've been put into. So it um, can be a lot of the early warning signs, a lot of things to look out for when it comes down to people we care about getting into those relationships. Absolutely. Marianne, uh, do, mm. uh, do you have any uh, information in regards to... Yeah, absolutely. No. You know, I would say when, you know, with sexual violence occurring within a domestic relationship, sure. Brian, you know... Sure gave a lot of really crucial um, points to watch out for. But when we're talking about sexual abuse we're, abuse, we're often talking about children and how to identify warning signs that a child might be being abused and mm -hmm. they aren't coming forward because of one reason or another. It's a very scary situation for a child because like I said, 95, well over 95% of the time sexual abuse is happening and the perpetrator is somebody that the child or the adult knows and trusts and loves. So there's barriers to overcome there with reporting. But with children we're looking for things like um, withdrawn from behaviors or from activities that they usually enjoy, um, maybe okay. acting out sexually, and you're like, where did they learn that behavior? That's unusual for a five-year-old. Um, so any concerning behaviors that a child might be um, exhibiting, definitely take that seriously and you know, talk to the parent, talk to a trusted adult, um, sure. talk to child protective services, however you need to get that child some help. Um, but with adults, you know, very much um, similar to what Brian talked about, also a lot of just changes in behavior related to depression and anxiety. So maybe someone is really withdrawn all of a sudden. They don't want to come out when usually they were really social. Um, they're all of a sudden really anxious um, in public. They don't want to go into crowded places. They're jumpier. They, you know, just behavior changes like that. Um, things that close friends would be able to pick up on. Very good. A lot of good information. A lot of warning signs are out there. And who who should we call? I mean, if we happen to start seeing, you know, you know, things going on with our our family or friends, who do we call? Well, that's a great question, and that's exactly why we have the Christian Hand Center. We have Reach Counseling. We have so many different resources and agencies out there, and when it comes to Christian and domestic abuse, we have the 24-hour hotline that they can call at any moment or any time. Um, some of those numbers are going to be flashing up on the screen quite a bit, so um, contacting our agencies. If you are having those concerns or you feel as though you're noticing you know, some of these unhealthy 
patterns occurring, it's great to be able to have that support because like I said before, when you, when it's the people that you love and care about who mean the most to you who are experiencing these things, it can be very tough to not be able to have that support system or to not have people to turn to. And when you're into those positions, that's Christian and domestic abuse, calling you know 920-236-5998, our Oshkosh number. You can get a hold of a crisis advocate at any time um, and just be able to talk through some of those concerns and get some of those questions answered or get a few more op options on the table for you. So, Very good. And Marianne, I think you pointed it out, uh, kids. And, and mm -hmm. you know, if they're being abused sexually, mm -hmm. Where do they turn? I mean, how do, how do they get the information out sure, there? Sure, absolutely. Well, just like Brian goes out into the schools, we have prevention educators that are in all of the schools in Winnebago County, pretty much all the schools, and they're talking to kids, teens, all day, every day. So sure. there's a lot of information being put out there. Um, so if people have questions, you know, if the kids have questions or if parents or adults in the community have questions about how to report abuse or just questions in general about sexual violence, we encourage them to contact REACH. They can call and ask us questions. We can help them decide, you know, maybe what's the best way to proceed or what services are available for you. So we can work with them if they choose to report and help facilitate that contact, or we can just be there to answer questions and provide information in the meantime. Very good. We have a 24-hour crisis line as well, I should say. So the number, um, either our Nina or Ashkash number, if you call any time of day. Very good. And I know there. that the numbers have been yeah. flashing up on yeah. the screens. And, uh, you know, write them down, you know, replay the show if you need to <laughs> and, and get that information yeah, out there. Websites, yep, Facebook, we're everywhere. Absolutely. And and another That's thing is, uh, you know, I talk to quite a few parents out there and I tell them, you know, get your kids off the games, get them off the iPads, get them off mm -hmm. the cell phones, talk to your kids. Because once you start opening up that those lines of communication, it's going to be easier for them to talk to you. Yeah. Okay. Now, the violence uh, has been identified, and someone recognized it. Okay. They report it. Is that the end of the story? No, absolutely not. When it when it comes to these situations, unfortunately, we we understand that it's called the cycle of violence for a reason, and that these these patterns and these behaviors don't just stop. They automatically don't just go away. They don't get better. Um, you know, and it is a long process. And on average, we understand that women, children, or anybody in these situations go leave and go back within the situation seven to eight times. You know, so as a support staff or as a, a team at the Christian Ann Center, each advocate, we understand the cycle of violence and the patterns that occur, and we understand that it's not easy to just all of a sudden pick up and remove yourself from a situation. You know, when, you, when you're in a relationship where you love somebody unconditionally, you know, that love conquers all things. You know, there's always that hope that things are going to change, and then there's always that fear behind, where do I go now? I'm going to split up my kids. I'm going to split up my family. I'm going to be alone now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so that really makes it very tough for people to just, you know, be like, oh, it's done. Um, and we do, we do understand that they do continually, you know, you know, have slip ups or they go back or um, things occur. And we're always going to be there as that support system to be able to continually, you know, show them that, you know, we are here. We're not just going to be like, well, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so. Very, very good. And Marianne, where, where does a the victim then turn, uh, you know, to get help? Sure, absolutely. Well, when we're talking about sexual violence, um, whether mm -hmm. within a domestic situation or independent, mm -hmm. um, sexual violence can certainly occur on its own, not as part of a domestic violence situation. So that can be, you know, an acquaintance, someone that someone is familiar with, doesn't really know, but, you know, one night they're out and a, they're sexually assaulted. So it can be an independent occurrence. and. Of course, REACH is always going to be there to provide support um, no matter what the context that the abuse happens within. So we can provide help for the victim to get a sexual assault forensic exam done. We work very closely with nurses in the area to have those that forensic evidence collected, the rape kit, as I think a lot of people are familiar with that term, mm -hmm. and working with law enforcement, working with the district attorney's office. So we'll go every step of the way as long as they would like us to, and if they decide not to report the assault, that's okay too. REACH has a lot of services that we can provide independently of advocacy and legal support. We have support groups, therapists, educators that can help people talk through the assault, help them understand what happened to them, and just you know help them know that there's no right way that their healing journey is supposed to look, that we're there for them every step of the way from you know when they're in that crisis state. Um, you know, yeah. through the through the end when they're doing much much better. It is absolutely amazing when people do come in 
um, and do take those first steps to actually mm -hmm. be able to, to reach out. They're, they're absolutely amazed at how many opportunities and resources and different things that we do have. Um, you know, we offer the same support groups and we offer um, that 24-hour hotlines. We have our domestic violence advocates. Um, we have our outreach advocates. We have our um, community, our rent smart programs. We have our family programs to be able to help with some of those uh, relationships that might have been lost due to domestic violence. Uh, we have the children's support groups to be able to make sure that the children are going to get the groups that they need to be able to heal from some of that trauma. Um, and just such a wide array of different things that we, we can provide for these people that are continually going through that cycle of violence. So, yeah. Very good. Very good. And I know that uh, both of you have uh, phone numbers and websites that mm -hmm. someone yes, we can do. contact you. I know that uh, they'll put it back up on the board here. Mm -hmm. But Brian, for Christine Ann Center, where do they, where do they call? and where can they go to? Well, we actually have uh, three different locations. Um, okay. We have uh, our main shelter is right here in Oshkosh, uh, so 206 Algoma Boulevard, which was, our, the number was 920-235-5998. Uh, uh, we have one in Nina and then one in Green Lake as well. So if you look up those uh, services online, you can absolutely find those numbers to those as well. So. Fantastic. And Marianne, the same for uh, sexual uh, uh, information in regards to uh, violence yes um, our main office is located in Nina on Commercial Street we also have a location in Oshkosh that we work out of a few days a week and appointments can certainly be made there if it's easier for clients to meet at that center fantastic yeah. well I, I thank you both uh, thank for you. sharing such great yeah, information from two uh, great resources and thank you again very much for coming on today's Absolutely. show thank you Joe. and talking with us and we'll be right back after this short break If you have expired or unused medication, don't flush it, pour it down the drain, or toss it in the trash. Safely dispose of unwanted or expired medications at the drug drop box located inside the Oshkosh Police Department. It's convenient and anonymous, safe and secure, and it's open to everyone 24-7. Drop off your prescriptions, over-the-counter drugs, pet meds, and more. Keep drugs out of the reach of children and out of our water supply. Dispose of unwanted or expired medications at the drug drop box. For more information, visit the Oshkosh Police Department website at oshkoshpd.com. Welcome back to Beyond the Badge. We thank Mary Ann Radley and Brian Wright for being on today's show. Don't forget about this year's Take Back the Night event being held on Wednesday, October 7th, 2015, beginning at 5.30 p.m. at the Osh UW Oshkosh uh, Alumni Center. Yes, yes, and I, I got it right, on the UW Oshkosh campus. Also, a quick reminder, and I know we'll be getting phone calls soon, hopefully this will alleviate some of the phone calls, about this year's Halloween Trick or Treat. Uh, it will be Saturday, October 31st from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Here's a couple of reminders for parents. Please remember to walk with your children when trick-or-treating in your neighborhoods. Make sure the kids are wearing bright colored costumes that are properly fit. And you also have a flashlight when walking during hours of darkness. Be sure that you check the candy before allowing the kids to eat it. It's not because you might like, ch like chocolate better than they do, okay? But the fact is, is that we want to make sure that there's, any, you know, there's nothing inside the candy. If it's suspicious, throw it out. If there's something in the candy that you can see, contact police, okay? We want to wish everyone a safe and enjoyable Halloween this year. For replay times... Uh, of Beyond the Badge, you can go to oshkoshcommunitymedia.org or the Oshkosh uh, Police Department website at oshkoshpd.com. If you missed a show or would like to see this show again, uh, you can watch it on streaming video at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. We thank all of you watching and listening to us today here at Beyond the Badge, and until next time, stay safe.